Hello, Sean here, Mountains Garage, in the beautiful state of Maine. After a week and a half or two weeks full of Turbo 400 after Turbo 400, that's seven days a week, I finished one about noontime today, and I'm not going to start another one this afternoon. I have more to do, but I'm going to take a small break and do something different anyway. So I started working on the 64 Dodge Dart that I'm going to put a single turbo GT45, we're going super cheap, on an aluminum 5.3, the power glide we built a few weeks ago. The car has a eight and three quarter with 391 gears. I don't know if that's staying or not. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to the car. None of it necessarily hard. It did come with a lot of parts, so I guess today we'll go over what it needs and where we're at so far. I'm not sure how many days I'm going to dedicate to it, whether I'll continue to work on it. I'm not sure which dummy engine I'm going to use or if I'm going to build the real engine and put it in. At this point, I don't know. I'm just taking it day by day. I feel semi-guilty working on it. There's a few other things I could or should be working on, but every time I feel that way, I'm like, hey, just do something. Whatever makes you happy. I have no schedule, no deadlines. It's just day after day of whatever. So let's go over what the car needs. Blatantly obvious needs anyway. The first thing I did this afternoon was remove the transmission cool lines that were already in the car. It had a small block and a torque flight. I've said it before, I'm not gonna ridicule anybody for doing their best. Somebody did their best and installed all metal, no rubber, so I gotta give them credit there, no hose clamps and rubber hose. They used metal from the transmission to the radiator and also to the auxiliary cooler. Seven cooler lines. That's a lot of fittings. I'll, being thrifty, I will cut all the nuts off and save all the connectors. That stuff adds up. So I won't save the line. I'm not that thrifty. But So I'll continue processing this and get it off the bench. Let's go over to the car. The car has a pretty decent auxiliary transmission cooler that I converted to dash six fittings, mostly so I could cap it so it wouldn't continue to drip on my head. It's actually pretty handy. You can work through this hole in the grill. So that is, for now, gonna stay. If I was to change everything I don't necessarily like about this car, there would be nothing left. So I have to change my attitude when I work on it. But I did get to use my new AN aluminum wrench. I actually bought two of them. I lowered the dummy power glide out from under the car. I apologize for the glare, but this mess here definitely has to go. So I'm going to trial fit the power glide that we built with the transmission shield on it. But whether it fits or not doesn't really matter because this mess has to move. So how we deal with it is really the only thing that changes. If the transmission clears the stock floor, I actually have a transmission tunnel for it. The K member has been notched, and this may actually help me out when I go to trial fit the front sump oil pan that I bought for my LS. This isn't too horrible, a little some grinding and some more welding. This can probably be fixed. I don't know if I need to cut it more or whatever. The brake lines will not be staying. More plumbing to remove. The right shock tower is horrible. Somebody did not do their best. <laughs> so, again, I'm going to wait and see how my log manifold and turbo fit. I have a hole in a fender for it. So I can fix this. It's just how much clearance do I need and how, how and why we're going to do it. This picture is dark. But it gives you an idea of the thick undercoating that I assume is factory. 
I hope most of it flakes off because welding on this is going to be difficult. I guess I'll have to heat it up and scrape it. But it sure looks factory. It's all over the car. Any Mopar experts, be sure to tell me. I guess if you're a Mopar expert, I said the word LS and you shut it off and went to another channel. <laughs> I covered it before, but real quickly, the subframe connectors need to go. They're only the same guy that welded in the right front shock tower welded these in. Uh, the pinion is pointing for the moon right now. I'm hoping moving the shackles up is going to fix that. If this gives me any trouble at all, it'll have a 9-inch Ford. And there's a massive hole where the spare tire used to be. They had a fuel cell in there. The car itself has, you know, lots of sins, lots of Bondo. It doesn't look bad. Don't look too close. But, again, this is supposed to be a cheap, fun project. <laughs> the car came with a spare K-member. Bare firewall, a transmission tunnel, and the entire right shock tower and frame rail. I don't know where this stuff was even sourced, but it's in really nice shape. Since we last looked at the Power Glide, I've been messing around with shifter brackets and shift arms. I ended up using this blank arm. I bored a hole in it and found a stud. And I'm going to weld on the back side. On this side, I'll just put a washer and the lock nut to set the tension there and the spacing. That'll work out fine. This clip does clear the boss on the transmission, so no big deal there. The shifter I have is unfortunately the ugliest one in the fleet. Seems fitting for this car, though. Maybe a little polish. She'll clean up. And I do have a neutral start switch that I picked up somewhere. It says 20 bucks. I don't think I paid that much. Who knows? And this cover that I think I can retrofit. My only complaint with the quarter stick, I love the way they operate. I can do it in the dock, like I've mentioned before, but they come, they're kind of ugly without a cover, so I think I can make something out of that. That's what it's all about. Seems fitting for this project. Safely strapped on the jack. This is the perfect angle to once again reiterate that on an LS engine transmission combination, your dipstick has to be flush or on this line with the bell housing because the right side cylinder head is flush with the bell housing. So unlike a traditional Chevy where there was a small shelf in the V, LS put the cylinder head flush. Just like that. Here's the small block Chevy for demonstration purposes. You had this much room to work with. We're sent it up in the transmission tunnel. And like I saw last time, I envisioned some angle bracket off the stock cross member. But all I really need is a piece of flat bar, and I'll probably reinforce it and bolt it back into here. Sticking with strictly bolt-ons. Saw a piece of cardboard. Make a bracket. oval holes. I gotta drill these two. I could punch them, but I don't feel like changing the punch. So I'll drill those three eighths. All mocked up, including my support bracket. You can see it right there. I'm gonna have to run some smaller headed bolts because they slightly touch the mount. I haven't welded that yet, but just mocking everything up. It's hard with a flashlight here, but yeah, you get the idea. When it comes to TIG welding, I'm my own worst enemy. I didn't sharpen the tungsten when I put the welder away last time. I looked at it today, said, ah, that's good enough. And you get this. I sharpened it. I started doing this piece. It started coming out bad. Go sharpen the tungsten, and it makes such a big difference. It, the welder actually does what you want it to do instead of having a mind of its own with the ox scattered everywhere. So I'll never learn. I'll do it again next time. This would, be, would have been an excellent MIG welding project, but I don't get any better at TIG welding if I MIG weld, so just the way it is. I put regular bolts with thin washes in place of the flange head bolts. 
could give me enough room. This will come apart and get painted for real when I'm sure I'm done modifying, but right now we'll consider this a mock-up stage. It's easy from this perspective to visualize how far to the passenger side the transmission tunnel is in the car compared to the torsion bar mounts, which are even to the frame, which are even to the rocker panels. So the, I believe the torsion bars are correct left to right. The center of the transmission tunnel is almost three inches to the right. When I usually build stuff from scratch, I'll offset the motor an inch to the right, but this is drastic. But all you can do is put everything in there comfortable and call it good. From the front perspective, the center of the bell housing is lined up with that divot, which lines up with pretty much the top of the curve and the cowl. Again, just put it in where it's comfortable. Call it good. Trial fitting the oil pan. It's going to be up about two inches, which is good. Should clear the steering, no problem. But the notches that already existed in the K member are not going to allow me to go forward, so we're going to have to do a little cutting. This needed to be repaired anyway, so we'll just make a more generous cut. Probably have to get into here even, but that's fine. I'll do that before I even attempt to lower an engine in there. But it should end up, depth-wise and everything, pretty decent. I have the transmission supported with a super safe ratchet strap. Actually working on the front end with the steering just hanging back in the breeze. There's really no room to get your body up in there, either between here and here, between here and here. Well, between here and here, I guess I'm just spoiled by GM where you can actually get up there and do things. But we'll work around it, make something happen. Cut, cut. These are the factory motor mount holes. This one's probably about six inches from the driver's side frame rail. And this one's almost rubbing on the passenger side. So. If I use those holes, my mounts will be strange looking, I'm sure. The piece of metal plate that I cut up to use for the transmission mount was eighth inch. Normally, constructing a transmission cross member or a mount, I'd grab something slightly thicker. That 125,000 sheet metal is about twice the thickness of the rest of the car. I can't believe that that stamped piece of sheet metal takes the abuse it does. A friend of mine has a duster, manual transmission. He's been drag racing it for 50 years. It does a wheel stand every time he lets the clutch out. On the bumper, most of the time. How that car has survived 50 years of doing that. Chrysler should buy it back just to cut it apart and see why. It's just a bunch of sheet metal put together. <laughs> Anyway, we got to start on it anyway. It's fun. It's, it's hard not to just want to cut everything out. There'd be nothing left. The whole car would be in a pile of scrap because no one part is worth saving. But as a whole, it's a whole something. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Next time, we'll do some cutting and some welding. I'll probably be easy on myself and let myself MIG weld the frame pot only because it's easier and more convenient. And uh, we'll probably just grab a dummy engine and try making some engine mounts to at least get, you know, the discovery portion of this, whether it's actually going to work or not, because I don't know of any 64 dots that are LS swapped, but I'm sure somebody's done one. But anyway, let's uh, meet up again in a couple days. Thanks for watching.